A 77 kilogram man weighs himself in the North Pole and at the equator. Which scale reads higher? All right, so I'm gonna start by drawing a picture. So we have planet. It's gonna be spinning this direction, I think. It doesn't matter. Well, it, it does matter, it matters deeply. Just for the answering the problem, it's not necessary to get that part, the direction of spin correct. So we have guy on top top of the world and we have someone on I'm gonna draw him facing up but like you know you, you understand what's going on here and the idea here is um, when it says weighs when you weigh yourself what happens is you're standing on a scale and you have force gravity going down and what the uh, scale is measuring is the force normal pushing back up and so if we look at the person, this is going to be the person at the equator. Look at the person at the equator. He's going to have a uh, force gravity going down. And he's going to have a force normal going up. And normally be like, well, those balance out. Everything is the same. But the idea with the person at the equator is he actually has an acceleration. So the sum of all forces is going to be force gravity minus force normal. And you might be thinking, what do you mean he has an acceleration? Well, he has an acceleration because he's going around the world and it's spinning. So his um, spinning is going to be mv squared over r. In my like First thought is, um, how is that? How do we find these values? What's going on here? Seems crazy. All which are reasonable obje objections. So when he goes around in a circle, the Earth has a radius, a radius Earth, and radius Earth I think is like 6,400 kilometers, um, which is about 6,400 times 10 to the third meters. Um, the velocity of the Earth is distance divided by time. The distance traveled is going to be 2 pi r, and the time to travel it is going to be 24 hours. And so what we're going to do is we're going to convert that into meters per second so we can figure out how fast we're traveling as the Earth is spinning. So um, actually I'm going to rewrite r as 6400 times 10 to the third. Now that puts it into meters, which is what we want. So now we're gonna look at the time component. So one hour is 60 minutes. One minute is 60 seconds. And it does one rotation about the axis every 24 hours. And so when we're going to neglect this Earth going around the sun, that would be excessive. And I don't think what's the problem is going for. Because they would have to know about the season, I guess. I don't know. So 24 hours. Minutes cancel. And we're left with meters per second, which is good because that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to grab the calculator. Calculator. On clear, 2 times pi, I'm going to do is 3.1415. I could use the pi key, be more accurate, I don't care. 6400, I'm just going to use multiply by 1000. It's 1000, yep, three zeros. Divided by quantity, 24 times 60 times 60, close parentheses, give me an answer. That's pretty quick. We're traveling at 465. 0.4 meters per second. Okay, we're good. Uh, 0.4 meters per second. And at first I was like, wow, it doesn't feel like I'm traveling that fast. It's true. Um, and the reason is because the air is moving with you and relative to the ground, everything feels normal. I'm not going to dwell too much on that, but yes, you are moving quite quick. And that's just with the earth spinning. So now, we're going to find out what the force normal is. 
So force normal is going to be force gravity minus whatever your mass is, your velocity squared over r. So the mass is going to be, um, let's see here, uh, mass times gravity minus mv squared over r, which is going to be mass times 9.8 1 minus uh, velocity, which is 465.4 squared, all over the radius, which we said was 6400 times 10 to the third. And the mass of the gentleman, they say 70 kilograms? 77. 77 kilograms. That right there, 77. All right, so I'm going to do this in parts. So this is going to be 77 times 9.81. And then I'm going to solve the second part. Hopefully it gives me a small number because intuitively I know that people don't fly off the Earth at the equator. At least reasonably sure. I've never actually been myself. But if I get the idea of people flying off the equator, then what I'm doing is probably wrong. All right, 465. Oh, not minus. We want to divide. So 465.4 squared divided by 6400 times 1,000. I get an answer of, ah, that seems reasonable. Zero point, oh, fail again, 0 0.0338. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0338. Make sure that seems reasonable. 0, 0, 0.0338. Yep. And so the mass at the uh, equator is 9.81 minus second answer 9.776. 9.7 seven six times seventy seven times seventy seven and we have seven hundred and fifty two seven fifty two point eight I'll just do seven fifty two oh, no I'll do seven fifty two point eight seven hundred fifty two point eight Newtons and it asks for its weight so weight is a force and so newtons is the correct unit. And it says what scale reads higher? So the north pole will read higher. The equator will read lower because of this effect we talked about with the centripetal acceleration. And by how much? So at the north pole, so force normal north pole, is going to be the same thing except since you're not going around in a giant circle with the Earth, due to the Earth spinning. Um, the, it's just going to be mass times gravity. So your weight at the North Pole is going to be 77 times 9.81. And so you get 755.37. 755.37. And therefore, delta force, not the uh, exciting action movie type delta force, just a difference in force, would be 7 minus 752.8 which is 2.57 newtons. So not a big difference, but a little bit of a difference and probably not enough to be noticeable. So if you divide that by um, 2.57 newtons divided by 9.8, one, it's about a quarter kilo or half pound. So not a big difference probably not even noticeable. So that's the idea for that one. Hope it helped. Hope it made sense. Hope it seemed even plausible, maybe even correct. Take care. See you next time.